So in Islam, um, that's like the alphabet, yeah? Alif, Lam, and then Meme, yeah? Um, you connect them if you're making one word, but this would be um, Alif. Again, with the languages, you know, sometimes words are spelt differently, like I've explained many times in the languages. Um, so you could spell it like that. And then you've got um, lamb, and then you have the, the meme. All right, so this to a lot of um, Muslims, it's a mystery. Like, no one can explain it. What does it mean? What does it stand for? And... We, as um, people who were studying and went uh, were put through the school of Islam by the master teacher, Parnabab Yanun, who was known at that time as Imam Isa al-Hadi al-Mahdi, he broke this down many, many, many years ago. Um, he actually translated the Quran without biasness for the whole world, um, not favoring any sects of, uh, of Muslims. Um, it's just translated word for word, giving you the breakdown and also put out a book called um, 360 questions to ask the Orthodox Sunni Muslims at the time. There are many recordings on YouTube that you can find addressing um, Dr. York, addressing Orthodox Sunni Muslims and breaking down the Quran and Arabic. He's a linguist that speaks many languages and of course Arabic is one of those. So you have to remember that when you're studying, there are different levels. So for us in Wu Sabat, those schools, those monotheistic religions, um, Islam, Christianity, Judaism, and other, sc other schools we went through, even to the Egyptologists, Sumerian schools, those are like nursery information for us, right? And when you're studying as a child, you're given information at a level you can digest. And as you progress and then you graduate, you may go from nursery or kindergarten to going into primary school, then secondary school. Then you might go on to sixth form or to college. What we call college here, you know, Americans, they say university, or we call them universities over here. But after university, you can, you know, go on to do postgraduate. So you could do, you know, you can do a first degree, master's degree. You can then go on to become the professor, um, and so on. But all that information is inside what you're given. But outside of that, you've got to do your own research and learn, right? So let's get back to this, um, Alif. Notice, you know, the um, Semitic languages, you write from the right to the left and not from the left to the right. Anyway, so the, people say this is a mystery, but the master teacher, Parnabab Yanun, broke this down to us many, many years ago with the A for the Alif, because that represents the Alif. That was representative of the person people refer to as Adam. Yeah, that's what that, that stands for. Um, and then the Lamb... Is, in fact, let me see if I can, um, because again, I'm not, I'm not promoting or paid by any of this, but if you go to Quran.com, it's an app, you can download it on your phone, just like you can do with the Bible, with blueletterbible.org, where you can check everything out for yourself, because you have to study and research, I'm trying to get my glasses, right, there we go. So, if you type in Quran, Q-U-R, middle right on the board. Uh, again, I'm not advertising them, not, nothing to do with me. It's just an app that I use when I study. So if you go to Quran.com, again, the word Quran is spelled in many ways. You know, some people spell it like with a K. This is what, why languages is important because phonetically you can say Quran, but the one I'm talking about is this one, Quran.com. And if you go to Surah Baqarah, which is the, the second Surah, the first one being Al-Fatiha, of course. But if you go to um, 2 verse 1, in fact, uh, let me see. Right, let's see what it says. Right, there you go. This, this um, app is very good because, again, you have different 
translations and you also have the transliteration. Uh, a transliteration is basically, um, you know, like if you have like the, the word Allah, right, which we can come to in a minute, I guess. Um, like, for example, you have Allah. The transliteration, they will say, is God, yeah? That's somebody translating this into, say, English. However, in the Arabic, this would not be what it is, right? So, in the Arabic, that would be, like, Allah, yeah? So, when I say transliteration, meaning that it's translated into English. So, if you go to um, Surah... Bakra, which is two one, you see that there. It literally says Alif, Lam, Mim, and you can see the Arabic as well, like that. So literally, the the Mim is that the Alif, right? So that's you see it literally there. So you see the Arabic like this, and you're gonna see uh, the transliteration as Alif. Lamb. See here, they've only they've only spelt it with one a as well, like like that. Yeah, because with the, you see these these little um signs, they come from a system known as tajweed, yeah, which gives you the the vowels and uh, you know the tamil buta and all that kind of all the, the little marks you see on top of the word. All right, so like that will make that instead of one a, it will kind of stretch it out to. Lamb, all right. Anyway, it says Alif Lamb Mim. That's that's where you're getting this from. This version transliterate translation by Mustafa Khatab, and it's it's from the Clear Quran. You even got the audio in terms of the tool, so you can actually play it as well. Let me see if you'll play. Alif okay, right. So, you know, these days we, we have tools that you can use to research and check things out because the one thing with us in Wusabat is we say, check it out. So anyway, on that, um, it basically breaks down um, that quote, where, where this Alif Lam Mim is coming from. All right, so the, I've already broken down that, that, that A, the Alif stands for Adam, and then the, um, the Lam, or we would say in English, um, L, let me just, um, yeah, we would say this is, this is dealing with, um, if you go to, I'm trying to find a quote again, I'll, I'll, I'll look for it because I don't want to waste too much time. I'll, like, so that's dealing with the night, the night, the night of power. Yeah. This is where you see, um, people recite the Quran all night, but this is where a lot of information, the Quran was being received, yeah, they call it the night of power. And then finally, um, the M, so we've covered the A, we've covered the L, and uh, um, the M actually represents Muhammad, yeah, because Muhammad, again, spelled in many ways, is really Ahmad, um, yeah, that's what the M or the Meme represents. So the three, Alif, Lam and Meme, represents Adam, who was the first person, according to the religious world, the religious books, um, the night of power when the Quran was being received, um, when you got a lot of information, and then Muhammad, the M represents Muhammad, who was... Um, receiving it um i'm trying to see if i can find that okay so i found a quote um if you just search in the quran.com laylat al qadri um which is let me write it here so that's gonna be the actual if you type q a d r yeah and then go to um, the Quran verse, chapter 97, verse 3, yeah? Um, and that is referred to, let me just write it out. 
על Q, the Q, A, D, R, right? So this is referred to as the night, the night of power when the Quran was sent down to Muhammad, right? So that's what it's really saying. It's saying from the beginning, dealing with Alif Adam, on this night of power, the Quran was sent down. And if you actually read from verse one, it says, indeed, it is we who sent this Quran down on the night of glory. Um, different, like I said, different translation, different versions will say night of power, etc., etc. So this mystery of Alif, Lam, and Mim is broken down as Adam, the night of power, and Muhammad being the M, that's who received the Quran. So that's, that's what that is referring to. But of course, um, you have to start saying, okay, who's Adam? Um, then when you go to who's Adam, you're going to end up with Allah because um, it will be said that Allah created Adam um, from the dust of the ground. You know, he took the dust, the black... And they say that's the first life or life form or man, right? But um, when you translate this word, this is a transliteration, just so that English speaking people will say this is God. But you, Allah and God are two different beings. Um, in Arabic, Allah will be the source, because the the, what they say, Semitic languages. We say Shemitic, the <sighs> source. That's the source, the source or the source of life, the source of creation. And, you know, the, like in um, Hebrew, that, that will be the equivalent in L, right? So now we're going to go into who Allah is because you say the source the source and who is Allah what is Allah because um, if you ask Muslims or read the Quran it's going to say that Allah is the light of the heavens okay but let me finish this and I'll come back to that so the two tongues or the two dialects of Arabic, right? So let's say this is Arabic. And this is going to be Hebrew. Right? This is important because even in the Quran, the Quran tells you if in doubt, go back to which was before, that which was revealed before. And that's talking about the book, right? When you say, what's the book that was before the Quran? Because um, remember, we've mentioned here that the Quran is again, can be spelled like this. Quran, right? And you ask people, what does that mean? What does the word Quran mean? Because obviously the way that Muhammad received it, you hear the story that he was told Iqra. Right, which which means to to they say means to read the two or the two readings, but let's carry on. So the reason I'm saying that is because the Arabic, the Quran is Arabic, yeah, and um, the the Bible or the Old Testament or they say Torah, a Torah, yeah, the Torah, which is what they accept because you find. Adam in the Torah, right? And you will find Moses, yeah? Or even before Moses, you find Abraham, Abraham, as they would say, Abraham, in Abraham, Moses are all in the Torah in the books before. So then, as, as you can see this building up now, yeah? Again, sometimes they spell Allah with just one L. 
because really a L can be one, just like here you can have good, which these are the same, so you, you can cancel it out. It's like in mathematics, you can cancel out the zeros, right? So on this side, Allah, you're going to have Ilo. Okay? This is all important because when we start to look at who this Allah is, you got Al, al L. You could even take the two even before that and just have A above this. Um, the A and the E, and you'll have AE. Or we say Ia, right? Again, remember with the um, with the languages you can write left to right um, and right to left in ancient languages. So then you'll have, as I said, plural because this is singular, and then you'll have the plural Allah Huma. Again, in terms of the spellings, there will be slight differences, right? Then you have Elohim, all right? And this is important because these are singular, and this is referring to two people, right? Who are really Enki and Enlil, right? Enki, because we, we go to the Sumerian doctrine, um, you have Enki. Again, look, Enki can be spelled like that, or Enki can be spelled like that because the key yeah because phonetically the languages had um really like pictures first and then they put words so you can say key like that or key like that so this is why you hear a lot of people spelling you know anunnaki because enki and on the other side enlil um enlil who is enki's brother you can spell him like that or you can spell like N, N Lil, N Lil as well. So the 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 spellings the they the, they're slightly different, but it's the same thing. It's just like here again. You can spell Elohim, like Elohim, as well, right? You can see because the 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 vowels are always important. Right? The vowels are important because when you're dealing with studying the languages, the vowels can be interchangeable. So Enlil and Enki, they're also known like um, Nudimud, Nudi, Nudimud, yeah, that would be Enki, Nudimud, and on the other side you have um, Num, Nun, Num, Nun Num Nir. Again, like I said, with the spelling, there's different ways of spelling these book, these words, um, these people. Right, so when you're saying Allah, you're really talking about these two, these two beings, Enki and Enlil. And the same in the Torah, when you're saying Moses and Abraham, these are just, again, words, Ab, Ra, and Ham. All right, Abraham, or in, in you know you can say Moses or Moshe, Moshe, in the Hebrew, Moshe, um, which is also in Arabic will be Musa, yeah, Musa, that's an A, Musa. So when you start to break down these words, you can start to see that. The, um, the, um, the Quran, which is the youngest of, of them, the Quran being, like I said, 1400 years old, Islam's 1400 years old, and it says, if you're in doubt in the Quran, to go back to that which was before, and that which was before would be the Torah, which Islam acknowledges Moses, they acknowledge Abraham, they even acknowledge Jesus, right, who they say is Isa. And so, the youngest one can be found in the ones previously. So the youngest one being the Quran, a lot of the stories, a lot of the information can be found in the Torah, pretty much. And everything in the Torah 
can be found in the Sumerian doctrine. Right, so I'm writing some of these things down um, so that you can um, check it out. Suma or Sumerian, also known as Shuma, Shuma in ancient time, or, or Suma, Su, Suma, yeah, or Shuma. Um, that's where the Bible, the Quran are coming from, these Sumerian, Sumerian um, books known as the you know, Enuma, Enuma, Elish, um, the epics, epics of Gilgamesh, um, Gilgamesh. You know, there's so so many tablets that have been found. Yeah, um, the Atara Hasis. Arcadian tablets, Arcadian tablets. There are many, 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 many scrolls and um, tablets and things that have been found, which all goes into, this is why everyone talks about the Anunnaki, yeah? Again, Anunnaki can be spelled in different ways, anu -na. Yeah, and some will put it with K-I, as I said here, because that's the name of Enki, yeah, Anunnaki. So they can spell it like that or with a Q-I at the end of it. This is important so you don't get confused. So when you see, when you see one word, like someone might be talking about Nudimud, and you don't know that's talking about Enki. And in the Bible, that will become Yahweh, for example, yeah. Yahweh. Now you may see that as just one word, but it's actually Yah and Way, which is agreeable. Yeah, Yah being agreeable, and Way being um, disagreeable. Again, dealing with the two brothers, and then you have his brother, who will be referred to in the Bible again as Baal. Yeah, Baal. So they, these are the same beings throughout the different scriptures, being called different names in the different languages, in the different tones, and it can be confusing because it's designed that way. It's designed for you to be confused because when you look at Baal, you're dealing with, when you say, you will start going into, you know, Babylon. Because Babylon, or Bab El, Baal El, Bab El is dealing with that old city called Babylon because in the scriptures they talk about old Babylon and new Babylon. Um, new Babylon being today as in, you know, the West. Um, so the word Babu became, became Bible, yeah? Because it's dealing with that Babylonian religion which became what we're calling the Bible and the Quran today. And, and that's where you get confused because the word Bible, as I, I've broken down before, is Babel. Yeah, Babel, meaning confusion. When you babble and you're just talking and nothing is making sense. And then when it gets to English, which is a translation of a translation of a translation of a translation, people are lost because in order for you to put the pieces together about what these books are trying to convey, you need to know and put the pieces together, but it's done that way to confuse you. And so you don't know that when you're reading these books, you're talking about these characters who are ultimately extraterrestrials, ETs. And the first time people hear that, they can get a bit shook or confused, like, what do you mean extraterrestrials, yeah? So, um, we have to repeat certain information over and over again so that it sticks in um, for people to get out of the spookism, thinking that these gods are like almighty and they're gonna hurt you. Because it doesn't even make sense to think that 
these deities can't help you when you're alive, but they can be there to torture you and put you into a place called hell when you die. So more people turn up to funerals to moan and worship the dead than to the hospital when, or when, when a birth is taking place, when somebody's been born, which should be um, you know, more glorified than death. But that goes into a completely different thing, that, something that you know, we'll break down later on. But um, so I know we were talking about the Alif, Lam and Meme and how that then relates to Allah, as we said, because you're dealing with this person called Adam, who's supposed to be the first person on the, on the planet Earth where everyone comes from. And um, these beings that are responsible for the, what people are calling creation are these extraterrestrial beings that most know, know, most know today as the Anunnaki, who are known by many titles as well. The main characters everybody talks about are the two brothers, um, Enki and Enlil, who are the sons of Anu. This is why we say this translates to Anu sending beings in, the group, in groups of 50s because the crafts that they came in could only carry 50 passengers at a time to the planet Ki, yeah? The planet Ki, which is one of the names this planet was known by in ancient times. It was known as Ki. It was known by many, many names. Um, Ki just happens to be the one, one of them. And from this word, Ki, because when people couldn't pronounce certain word, they would change it um, to what they could say. So the Ki became Gi. Yeah, G-E. Gi. Ki. G. And then that G became Geo. Because it was dealing with the geolo ge geology uh, of or the planet, yeah, and that's why I like geography, geology, um, geometry. All of those words come from this word being mistranslated or mispronounced from key, key to g to g to geo to geometry, etc., which deals with the the planet, the formation of the planet. Um, so yeah, so that's what um, Alif Lam Mim stands for. Um, it's no longer a mystery. You can you can find that in the Quran that was translated by the Master Teacher. You can find it in the 360 questions to ask Sunni Orthodox Muslim, and you can find it in many other scrolls. And we are now demystifying the books, the characters in the books, um, who people are calling Allah. Um, who is, as I said, you're dealing with Yahweh. And then when we go into Yahweh, you're talking about good and bad, or they say cherub, um, or seraphim. Seraphim, right? Seraphim is the good ones. And then you have the cherub, cherubim, being the, what people call bad or disagreeable ones, yeah? But really, that's just dealing with this, these beings that, uh, have both natures. They cry, they walk, they talk, they sit down. They do everything that you and I do, but because it's mystified that they're from heaven, a place that's unconfirmed, which is really dealing with the different constellations, which you can find in, in the books, um, dealing with, you know, like um, a place that you call Ilion, um, where they say that Akasha records are kept, and you're dealing with places like Orion, Sirius, Kisil, um, and depending on which language you're, you're using, the names will be different. So what we do in Wu Sabat in these classes and breaking down information is so that you can do more research or ask more questions because, like I said, we are dealing with information and past what you would consider to be university because the universe is only one level where you have omniverses. So as we, as uh, Musbatu or Sabians or, or Nuwapians, we have walked through these schools and we want to take you to a higher level of consciousness. And that only comes by way of your questions to raise our mentality. So the more questions you ask, the more information we can pull out from our catalogue and our libraries of 
out formation into information because, you know, Pana Bab Yanun, Dr. Malachi Z. York, authoring over a thousand books. Those books are just to, to spark you off, to turn you on. So those people that are really serious on the planet that are raising their vibration, this is for anyone and everyone who would like to learn the truth about these books, about these characters, and then you would, it would take you from information where you're inside and being in line and being in, in formation to starting to go outside in terms of connecting with higher beings and connecting with your, your counterpart, your ethereal beings, your etheric parents. I know this might sound, you know, um, new to some people, but it's all about igniting that flame in you, the, the solar plexus, the inner being, so that you can start to learn more, study more, ask more questions, all right? I hope that's answered that question um, for you relating to Alif, Lam and Meme. Um, and yeah, I'm happy to take any other questions.